Number 17 has us fill out the rest of our flight log the best that we can. So under the altitude column, that's going to remain the same until we're ready to descend. So then this portion here will actually be in the descent. Um, VORs, if we want to use any VORs along the way, we can. it's optional to write in any frequencies or radials if we were going to use those for checkpoints or something like that, for example. We're not going to worry about that today. When we're looking at the winds, we see that as we get closer to Columbia, the winds shift ever so slightly, but decrease the velocity by about 15. So let's look at halfway through our route. We'll just call it around Newberry, and we'll update the winds here. And we're going to make those 290 at 15. So the winds 290 at 15, and the temperature is basically about the same. We have plus 15 Celsius. Okay. So all of these are going to be the same until this point. <clears throat> the true course and the variance remain the same throughout the entire flight. And so therefore the magnetic course is the same, but the wind correction angle will have to recalculate um, for the second half of our journey since the winds change just a little bit. Our magnetic heading uh, will stay the same here. It'll still be 146 and 146 because the winds during these uh, during this duration of the flight plan are the same, so we just bring that down. Um, course heading, we're going to get to that later. Um, the distances we have calculated out, and we know our, gr our ground speed for this portion, so we can fill this in. And now we have two pieces of the puzzle. We need the third, so therefore we'll go to the E6B calculator side find the answer. So if we know distance and speed, how do we get time? We use our little formula right here, and it says to put the pointer on our speed. So it's actually still on 120 from the last time we used it. And then what do we know? Do we know distance or time? Well, this time we know the distance, so we find that on the outer scale. So I need something up here that represents 12. So we can use this, which represents 12, and then we look inside to see how many minutes it would take. Well, it wouldn't make sense to take 60 minutes, but six minutes does make sense. So then six minutes would be our answer for the time of that flight segment. Now, our speed stays the same, so I don't need to move the pointer, but this time we're gonna travel a distance of 14 miles. So where do I see 14 on the outer scale? Right here, and then I drop down and underneath that reads the time, which is seven minutes. The next one, our speed, ground speed stays the same, but we're, our leg length is 10 minutes. So the speed is set on 120, and I have to find something that represents 10, and then I look below that, and I see five, zero, which represents five minutes. So as I'm flying along, we reset the timer again and again to measure how long it's going to take us from checkpoint to checkpoint to be sure that we're burning the fuel that we estimated out in our flight plan. And we're going to have to recalculate out for the second half of our journey since the winds changed a little bit. So we go to the wind side of our calculator, and we just follow the directions again. We start with the center grommet on 100 to make it easier. Set wind direction under true index. The wind direction for the second half of our journey was 290 degrees. So we place 290 under the true index. Mark wind velocity up from center point. The wind velocity was 15. That was given to us by the weather briefer. So we go 10, 15, put a little pencil mark there. Number three says set true course under true index. The true course we already wrote down here. We got that by using our plotter in the very beginning of this process. So we spin this around to 133 for our true course. Number four says slide wind velocity mark. Remember again, that's the mark that you made with your pencil 
slide the mark you made with your pencil to the true airspeed. So here's our pencil mark and our true airspeed we got out of the performance charts 105. So I slide the whole thing up till my pencil mark sits on 105 and now two bits of information are revealed. Under the center grommet number 5 says that's where we find our ground speed. So it looks like we have 100, 110, about 118 knots. So we can fill that in on the speed, 118. And then our wind correction angle reads, as number six says, between the center and right or left. So it looks like it's over to the right by three, because if this is 10, this represents two, four, six, eight, 10, so therefore it looks like about 3 to the right. Again, if I can't remember if I'm supposed to add or subtract, use your little formula at the top of your E6B, <coughs> and it tells us to add it if it's to the right. So down here, my magnetic course was still 140. The wind correction angle is plus 3. So my new answer is 143 for the magnetic heading. And that will remain the same. So now we just have to fill in this spot, or this leg. We're still going 118. We haven't begun our descent yet. <clears throat> so that was from the lake to the top of descent. So let's finish filling in the time. That's the last thing missing. So we have the distance and we have the speed. So we go to the calculator side of our E6B, and it tells us to put the pointer on the speed. So put the pointer on 118. If that represented 120, then this would represent 110. That represents 100. So 118 should be right about there. So once I have the speed marked with the pointer, the distance reads on the outer scale which we said was 14, and the time reads on the inner scale. So I go find 14, and it looks like a little over seven minutes. Um, you can round it, and you could say seven and a half minutes uh, in case you fly like this a little bit. It would be on the safe side. Um, if you wanted to use seven minutes, and then just estimate in another gallon or two somewhere else, that's fine. Just be sure that you consider all possible fuel usage. I'm just going to make it um, eight minutes. How about that? And then we know we're safe, just in case we fly left and right a little bit on our straight line. Next, we have just three miles to cover. So three miles is going to be represented by this three zero. And it looks like we would use 1.5 gallons of gas plus a little bit. So we can always round that up. 1.5, uh, we could just call it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say gallons of gas. I meant to say minutes. It could take a minute and a half, or we could just call it two minutes. So we'll make that two minutes. 